What is going on, guys? I'm Ron Man, and welcome back to the channel. And today we're doing something a little different. We're taking a look at NES games, which I feel have unique cartridge art. Now, I've compiled a list of one, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine. There's actually ten games. I didn't plan on it to be ten. This is also, um, unscripted. I, I haven't scripted anything. Normally when I do my game reviews, there's a script. I read from the script. Uh, not happening today, so I'm just... I'm just talking. Yeah, hopefully it, uh, hopefully it doesn't hopefully it doesn't suck. Uh, I, I, I already don't know what to say. I guess we're just gonna sit here in silence for the next ten minutes. So I'm going to refer to these games as having unique labels, not bad labels. A lot of people would call them bad. I don't think they're bad, I just want to call them unique. And not every label on the list is necessarily bad, it's it's just unique for whatever reason I've decided, and it's uh, card art that I've always found unique. I should probably just fucking stop rambling on. The first one that we're going to cover, and it's a game that most of you are probably familiar with, and it's going to be no surprise to anybody, but coming in at number 10 is... The original Mega Man. What the fuck is this? Who is that? That's not Mega Man. That's... That looks like... Fucking Uncle Steve... Friday night... After the bar... And he's... He's had a little too much. I don't know how this label came into existence, but... I mean, this is the first game, so... You can assume that the artist had no fucking clue what he was... Drawing. And... Someone was probably like, oh yeah, it's a guy dressed in blue... And he shoots... From his arm. And the artist is probably like, yeah, uh, well, you need a gun to shoot, so there's a magnum, and, you know, yellow and blue, I, I, I don't know, it, it, what the fuck, what's going on here? Coming at number nine is a pretty close relative, but, uh, Mega Man 2, again, what the fuck is it, look at, look at these guys, he's, again, he's got a fucking gun, look, look at the bad guys, and look at fucking Wily, that doesn't even really look like Wily, but he's scared, I remember when I saw this when I was 16. Yeah, I've played Mega Man my whole life, but for some reason, I guess I didn't see the the art until I was like 16. I remember looking at it and just thinking, what the fuck? Again, this is Uncle Steve. Yeah, they fucked that up. The gun. Coming in at number 8 is uh, Chubby Cherub. We got a naked guy with his mouth wide open, no teeth. I don't know what he's supposed to be, if he's supposed to be like an angel or something. I mean, he's got wings. Moving on to number seven, we got Dragon Power here. I mean, just look at this guy. He doesn't study martial arts. Who gave him that black belt? Look at his foot. I just can't get over that fucking foot in his face. I, I just find this so weird. And they got a fucking screenshot of the game on the cover, and you can't even really tell what the fu what it's supposed to be. Coming in at number six, we have Master Chu and the Drunkard Who. I just don't know what to think. Like, I actually don't know if... I want to be there hanging out with these guys, or I never want to see this label again. Look at his foot. Coming in at number five is Fester's Quest. That's right. Fester's Quest with his big, fat, fucking face, and all those fucking wrinkles and fucking chins, and and he's clearly got lipstick on. Looks like he's waiting for a bloge, probably from Chubby Cherub, our, our pal Chubby Cherub. Coming in at number four is George Foreman's KO Boxing. I mean, there's not much to say with this label, except you can tell that they didn't hire anyone to do the label. They just put the name of the game on, blue background, and a clearly a cropped picture of George Foreman looking like maybe he's getting fellatio as well. Probably from our buddy Ch Never mind. Coming in at number three is Chiller. Now, I really like this cartridge art. I mean, I like all the cartridge art in the video here for different reasons, but I really like Chiller because it's spooky. I like spooky shit. But I love that grave. It doesn't have anyone's name. It just says, Dead People Are Cool. Like, I don't know if that's just the artist trying to be edgy, Ooh, dead people are cool, eh. Or if he's just trying to make a literal statement. Because when you die, your body temperature drops, and you end up becoming cool. Coming in at number two is Where's Waldo? Now, the reason I find this interesting is because the label art itself is a Where's Waldo puzzle. How many NES games can say that? 
I mean, it's not hard to find them, but I think that's kind of interesting that they actually have a puzzle on the... I'm just going to sh show a close-up of it rather than stick it up to the front of my camera like a fucking moron. Finally, at number one, we have John Elway's quarterback. Is that his name? His name is John Elway. Is it John Elway? Yeah, John Elway. John Elway's quarterback. This is obvious. The guy's never held a fucking controller in his life. Here you go, throw on a fucking helmet, and there's your NES controller, and they even put the seal of approval right in the controller. Just to try to cover it up, because clearly, he's not a gamer. He's a football player, I think. I don't know anything about football. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit like. Please subscribe, let me know what cartridge art you think is interesting, and why, and we'll see you in the next video.